Good morning, this is Michelle with Moonlight Makes and today I'm really excited to be sharing this sweet little embroidery project with you. We like to call it Breathe and it's a really, really fantastic project for anybody who's beginning embroidery, who hasn't been doing it for a long time, um, who's never picked up a needle or for somebody who's more seasoned and are excited to kind of take their or put their own take on this little guy. We're going to be using what's called a back stitch until the very end, at which point I'll show you how to do these little French um, knots. You can use all kinds of different colors. I have been embroidering on these little cocktail napkins that I love using. They're just six inch linen cocktail napkins. Um, and so there are all kinds of different variations. When I'm done with these, I think what I'm going to do is this is a little tea towel. I'm just gonna sew it on there and probably share it with people that I really love. This uh, this project will take about an hour to do, maybe two if you are taking your time. So it's perfect for uh, one sitting for either watching a movie or doing a Zoom meeting. Um, I find it really therapeutic to do these, and I am really looking forward to seeing what you take on, or what your take on it is. All right, for this embroidery project, we're gonna need a few things. First, we're going to need embroidery floss, and that's going to be kind of the variety of colors. The next is going to be a four inch embroidery hoop. This is going to go beneath our linen, and if we just line it up right around where all of the hash marks are, we'll get a really nice fit. All right, so here we go, and then I'm going to tighten it just a little bit with my screw to give it a nice, firm. Um, drum-like effect. Next I'm going to take out my long embroidery thread. Now all embroidery thread has six different threads that are attached to it. With this I'm going to actually pull out only two and what I'm doing right here is just kind of unwinding and because this is a long thread it's going to take me a little bit and sometimes it gets just a touch bit tangled. If that happens to you don't even think twice. Just uh, go slow and pull it apart um, as best you can. Every once in a while, the very, very end of it gets a little bit wonky and I wind up just taking a scissor and cut the very bottom of it. But with this one, I got it all the way taken care of. So now, notice I've got the two, or the piece with two and the piece with four. And the piece with four, I'm just gonna roll up and put away. I don't really want that to be tangled because I will probably use it later. Now I'm gonna take my needle threader and my needle threader is such a cool thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the needle threader and I'm gonna thread it through the eye of the needle. Then I'm going to take my embroidery floss and I'm gonna floss it, or, and I'm gonna put it in the big eye of the needle threader and then I just pull it and all of a sudden the needle is threaded. Now, when I begin, I'm gonna start at the very, very back of the embroidery um, loop and I'm gonna pull the thread up to about two inches maybe and I'm just gonna kinda hold it there when I, or where I want it to be. Then I'm gonna get, or get my first couple of stitches and I'm gonna continue to hold the needle or the thread and what it'll do is it'll wind up just completely catching on that spot and it eventually just really won't go anywhere and I'll be able to trim it when I'm done. So what I'm gonna do right now is called the back stitch which basically means that I'm gonna go past where I want it to go and come back. So what I will do here is I'm going to go past where I'd like my B to go and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to get it as close to that first um, hole as I possibly can. Then I'm going to do that again and again and I'm just going to come right, right back into that first hole. This takes a little bit of practice but it winds up making it so that you get kind of a strong or a strong line and it's really good for writing words and um, 
just kind of doing straight lines. I love the back stitch because it's really the beginning embroidery stitch and it just makes it so that it's super easy for you to continue to kind of get everything um, nice and taken care of. This stitch also makes it really possible for you to have a lot of time just working on getting comfortable with this needle and thread. This is really an art form and the more that you practice embroidery the better that you get with it. So with the back stitch things don't absolutely have to be perfect. If you wind up absolutely hating what you're doing you can always cut the thread and start all over. But one of the things that I love about embroidery is that, is that it is such a hand craft, and so it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to worry about perfection or anything. You just need to worry about kind of the meditation of the whole situation and making something that you're proud of and that you really enjoy doing. For me, this is about keeping my hands busy, especially when I'm either in a Zoom meeting or sometimes when I'm watching TV or sometimes when I just need my brain to be a little bit still and I just need to be reminded to breathe. And that is the whole reason that we began this particular project and the whole thing about embroidery in general. Now I'm coming up against the end of my B and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch my last stitch and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna, the way that, and rather than tie a knot, I'm going to go underneath the stem of the B a few times and just stitch around about so that you can't see it on the front of the hoop but it winds up just going underneath any of the other threads and that way it kind of holds it close to the embroidery and it really keeps it just very tight where it is. It also make it so that it doesn't really come unraveled and that you don't have to tie any sort of fancy strange knots. I find that three or four stitches do it just fine and I'm just going to cut this real close to the hoop. I may go back and trim it even closer later so that those little threads don't get caught in my embroidery hoop. And I find that with the B, I really like to keep this particular um, letter in this design apart from the rest of the letters, but the rest of the letters I'm just going to stitch together almost in cursive writing. So again, I'm going to go up through the beginning of the R. I'm going to hold on to that last thread and I missed it this time. It went a little bit farther than I meant it to so I had to try again. Practice makes perfect and here's where I'm going to start getting a little bit more um, a little bit less careful. I like to do a lot of the back stitch by just keeping the front or keeping my needle on the front of the hoop and kind of stitching underneath it. I find that it's a lot faster and I can see it a little bit better that way. Um, if you are more of a perfectionist than I am, then you're going to want to go through the hoop every single time. But for me, What's going to happen with this particular embroidery piece is I think what I'll wind up doing is just stitching the entire linen napkin on a pretty little tea towel and I'll wind up giving it to my grandmother or my mom or a neighbor who just needs a little bit of reminder to breathe. Um, I really, I don't know about you, but when I am doing a craft project, I absolutely love creating them for other people. Really, it's like when people get a homemade gift from me, a lot of times they are so appreciative, but I have to say that this is just one of those things that I do to, um, to be happy in my world. It would kind of be like if, um, if you did yoga a lot and you were going to do yoga for me um, and give it to me as a gift. Um, that's kind of what a lot of my hand crafting things are for. So I wind up giving them away to people who I need or who need them and um, and using them as kind of a mental st mental exercise to kind of stay or keep my mind quiet um, and definitely set my intentions. I don't know what you guys are going through, but um, I know that remembering to breathe is always a good thing. And for me, it's all about kind of keeping this stability. 
And I'm going to go all the way through that E, and I'm going to start on the middle of the A so that I can get this really nicely um, just kind of all put together, and there's not a huge amount on the back. You'll be able to see it or see the thread go from one letter to another if you really look at this particular piece through the light. But again, I'm going to just wind up stitching this piece onto a um, dish towel. One of the other things that I do a lot with these particular embroidery things is I will um, leave them on the hoop and hang them up around our house and use them as artwork. It's just one of my favorite things to do. Um, I like to start with the lettering, but you can start with the feather if you want. It honestly doesn't matter where you start as long as you do start. So going through the A, um, I like A's that are a little bit more fancy, but one of the fun things about embroidery is that you can kind of choose whatever font you want. Um, embroidery is super easy to develop your own patterns for. What I really like to do, um, and if you've got one of these kits, you'll have the um, everything drawn in on, or drawn in for you. But we draw them in with Crayola washable marker, and one of the really cool things about that is that when we're done with this piece, what we'll do is we'll just put it in a little bowl of soapy water for about ten minutes. It doesn't even need to really have it or that long and the marker will all just completely wash away so that when you're done all you can see is the the thread um, and you don't get to see any of the marker so um, that's one of the little tips and tricks that I use there are a whole bunch of different products that you can use that are really fancy when you're looking at embroidery um, markers or ways to create your patterns and um, I know that a lot of people swear by them, but I find often the simplest solution is the easy, or the best one, at least for me. And so Crayola mar or washable markers, I am telling you, I found them in my kid's craft drawer one day, and I have never honestly looked back. It makes embroidery so, so much easier to actually have a pattern. I used to do all of this freehand, and... Um, any of my lettering would kind of uh, be tilted and wonky. And so it's so much easier to have a pattern to follow with the thread. And uh, using washable markers is definitely the way that I like to go. Um, it also makes it a lot easier to see kind of what the different colors of patterns are for or are going to look like. Sometimes my thread gets really a little bit twisty, so I just kind of drop it and let it untwist. It just makes it a lot easier to take care of that. So we are going through the H. Um, now, this back stitch that I keep talking about and singing the praises of is really, really fun. There are a couple of different ways that you can create this really interesting variation. Now, with this particular project, I recommended that you only use two... Um, of the threads in your embroidery floss, but you can really use any thread that you like. You can also vary the stitches to create a more um, bubbly feel when it comes to the back stitch. So you can also even use a single thread if you really want to get um, fancy and technical. I really find that for me, using two embroidery or pieces of embroidery floss and that is often called ply so sometimes when you see embroidery patterns you'll they'll re refer to one ply two ply three ply four ply five ply or six ply and all they're all they're saying there is the number of pieces of thread that you're going to need to create that pattern so this is technically two ply but later on in this little pattern, I'm going to get um, get a little bit fancy and try a couple of different kinds of ply so that you can see kind of what it looks like when you add um, more pieces of embroidery floss to your drawing or your um, artwork, really. 
I'm also going to, at the very end of this particular video, show you how to do French knots. French knots are these um, are a special kind of stitch that you can either use or not. They're the little dots at the bottom of the of the um, feather. I think that they're really fun, and we will have a project that is only devoted to French knots. All right, I'm going to flip this over and just tie this little guy off. Just kind of tuck it in in the rest of the stitching. Um, not going to worry about any fancy knots. I'm just going to stitch this underneath the rest of the stitches and then I'm going to cut it off close. All right. I'm also going to clean up the back of this just a little tiny bit and flip it on over. Now I'm going to use the same embroidery floss that I just used for the lettering for the stem of the feather. I really like kind of that coordinated look of the dark green and then the dark green. And what I'm going to do is for the base of the feather, I'm just going to give a couple of stitches so that it's nice and tight. And then I'm going to do the back stitch all the way up the feather. And as soon as I get to the top, I'm going to turn around and go right back the way that I came. That way I've got kind of two lines that make it really, really thick um, so that the base of the feather is just really outlined and defined. Makes me kind of excited. Now this particular craft is really fun to do with groups of people. I've talked about doing it in Zoom meetings and the company that I have actually teach, or well, I along with two other amazing partners, we actually teach craft parties in restaurants and coffee shops and breweries and we teach a number of different things. Um, we haven't had the opportunity to do embroidery yet because um, as we were developing this particular craft, we wound up going into lockdown. So um, we weren't able to do that quite yet, but I'm really looking forward to a day that we can get back into a, the restaurant. And because I ran out of floss, I'm just going to backstitch a little, or like do the understitch a little bit, and I'm going to snip my thread, and I'm just going to grab some more embroidery floss. We have lots and lots so that there's no way that we'll run out. Um, and I'm just going to pull it. It's funny, after you do the first one, usually the second one winds up being a lot easier the second time you pull two strands off. Um, but not this time. This time I've developed a nice little knot. One other way that you can un ravel embroidery thread a little bit more easily is to start in the center of the piece of embroidery floss rather than um, at the top and I am tired of that or dealing with that so I'm just going to cut the base off because I'm, I'm not dealing with that snarl and then I'm going to go in and em ne or thread my needle one more time so I've got my needle and I've got my threader. I feel like the needle threader is definitely one of those tools that is really underutilized. I always wind up forgetting about it and I just wound up buying a whole bunch of them um, because they're, they just makes life so much more easy. Alright, so I'm just gonna catch my thread right underneath the base of the stem of the feather. Do a couple of um, little stitches to get it all straightened up and I'm gonna start stitching up the base of the feather a second time to really outline this particular um, line because I just think it's so important to kind of stabi or stabilize it. But what I love about embroidery in front of other, like with other people, is that this particular craft is so, so great to do while you're talking with other people because it's it keeps your hands busy 
you definitely are learning a new skill. Um, for example, this particular design, once we're done with it, if you wanted to, you could you can do a whole bunch of things with it. You can put it on a tea towel, you can just use it as a napkin, or you could um, cut it out and turn it into a patch for a pair of jeans. But it's not so distracting that you can't have a really, really great conversation with people while you're stitching. Um, I've really found that when I am talking to other people and I've got my hands busy, I find it a lot easier to focus kind of on what they're saying and where the conversation is going. Um, when I was in grad school, I would often see people knitting during lectures, and I remember thinking at one point that that was just crazy, and I didn't understand why they would do that. And uh, it turns out I understand it now. Um, all right, so I have finished the center, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose one of these shades of green to start or start filling in my um, my feather. Now you can use any colors that you want. I've chosen green for this particular one, um, kind of greens and yellows. I was looking for an earthy um, variety of colors. And so I'm just going to take these and I'm going to use a couple of different kinds of um, of thread. So I'm pulling this apart and I'm going to thread my needle. And what I love about this part of the project is it's really uh, one of those things that you can do just by being an imperfectionist. So as you start filling in the feather, there is no wrong way to do it. I like to... Um, do a lot of back stitching and kind of create a uh, pattern where I am just uh, putting things in kind of randomly but occasionally what I'll do is put blocks of color and then I'll have a very different color that goes on top of that um, this is also a really fun time for you just to start experimenting with what um, what different sizes of stitch you'd like to use. It honestly doesn't matter. You can use little tiny stitches going up and down the leaf. You can use really large stitches. You can also use something that's called a satin stitch, and I'll play with that in just a little bit. A satin stitch is exactly like a back stitch, except that you just don't do any stitches. So <laughs> it's like one big stitch, and they're just all going the same way. There are a couple of projects that um, really utilize the, utilize the satin stitch um, in a really beautiful way. And I am really excited to show those to you. But this is kind of a, a great way for you to start getting it started on and experimenting with what different stitches look like. Embroidery is really, um, it's really like painting with thread in my humble opinion. You can do so many interesting things with it. Uh, if you if you want to learn more, uh, there's a modern embroidery group on Facebook that I've loved to see. There's also a whole bunch of different artists on Pinterest and um, all kinds of different ways that people are using embroidery to really express themselves in kind of odd different ways that are just absolutely magical to, to pay attention to. One of the neat things about embroidery is that there are also no less than about 25 different stitches that I can think of off the top of my head, and I'm sure that I'm missing a whole bunch. And every time I learn a new stitch or you learn a new stitch, you have this new tool in your box to just start creating something that is wonderful and fantastical and super exciting. Um, and for me, it always winds up leading to new designs. Um, for example, the next project that we'll be doing is all about French knots. I love French knots, but I also, oddly enough, adore sheep. And I find sheep to be one of those animals that are just so humbling and beautiful. So um, 
basically will just be making sheep with French knots. And, uh, and that's just one of the cool, cool things that you can do. Um, so hopefully this is only the very beginning of the embroidery journey for you. So I'm just going to use the yellow floss and go all the way kind of up this feather. I'm going to add more shades of color, so I'm definitely leaving lots of space in between the, the kind of blocks of that greenish yellow that I'm using, just so that there's lots of space for the next um, threads to come in. With the feathers, we like to use um, about four or five different shades that way they can kind of all blend together and it can look really super natural um, and with the kits that we've got we use the uh, we use the same kinds of embroidery floss but truly you can use any color that you you could ever dream of um, creating these feathers and once you've got this particular design um, down pat and enjoy making it, you can also embroider things like jeans or a purse or a wallet. Um, all of these things would look really cool with a feather embroidered on them. I also really enjoy using embroidery to fix things. When I was a kid, I, I think I was first in, introduced to embroidery when, um, for whatever reason, I was a weird kid, I used to bite holes in my shirts. Um, and my mom would, could not afford to buy new shirts for me, so she was just started embroidering flowers around the holes um, that I had bitten into the shirts. And I think it may have kind of backfired on her because I absolutely loved the embroidered flowers that she kept putting on my shirt so I kept biting holes in them um, she also used embroidery to embroider our stockings every year we got a new um, little embroidery patch whether it was a snowman or a Christmas tree or whatever um, that's what my mom used to use embroidery floor or for so I have finished up with the yellowish color now I'm going to move on to another kind of greenish color. I'm going to put that one off to the side. Ah, hit the or hit the camera right there. All right. So now we're going to grab our thing of shades and let's uh go with this one. It's more of a pea green kind of color. And I'm going to separate the embroidery floss. There were six. I'm going to take out two, and I'm going to take them from the very center. That way it's a lot easier to pull the embroidery floss apart. Now I'm going to um, thread my needle and fill in just a little bit more of the embroidery. So now I'm going to speed things up a little bit and cut toward the end of this project. I'm going to take my time, but not take too much of your time. That way you can see how we finish up this really, really fun project and how you two can make this your own. All right, so let's get going. All right, now that I'm just about done filling this in, I'm gonna actually start with the last part of this project. And I'm gonna start by showing you how to do French knots. Now I've got my embroidery floss and I'm actually going to tie a knot at the end. I don't do this very often, but for French knots I do. Then what I'm going to do is bring the thread up, loop it around the needle, hold the needle in place and pull 
the thread through. Then I'm gonna do that again. Bring the thread up, wrap around twice, down through, or down right beside the first stitch, up, wrap around twice, bring the needle down right next, right beside, not through the same hole, but right beside it. Wrap it around, hold it in place, and now I have these cute little French knots. Now I love outlining anything that's filled in. Really, I love outlining just about everything. I think it looks really cool in thread. So I'm just gonna finish this last bit with um, a green outline in the entire, along the entire perimeter of the feather. I feel like it really makes this project stand out. And I've decided to use the thread that is ac that is actually pretty thick. So this particular part of the project, I am using four ply, which again means four different kinds of the embroidery floss. And I'm just going to follow along where my stitches went. It also really, when you outline things that you've either satin stitched or back stitched, it really acts to cover up any imperfections you might have. So I just, I love the way that things look. So let me finish this part up and I'll show you what this looks like at the very end. Now that I've finished stitching around the edges, my project is finally done. It took me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and I have loved sharing with you. Thank you so much for being a part of this and I can't wait to see yours.